Associating partners with Allah Azza wa Jal can take different forms and shapes. Uh, one of which is slaughtering for other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Some people slaughter for uh, the dead. Some people slaughter for uh, pious people or saints as they call them. Uh, another form is vowing for other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Another form is supplicating other than Allah, saying, oh so and so help me. And this happens a lot. Many people, uh, unlearned people, Islamically unlearned, they go to graves of dead people who cannot help their own, their own selves and say, oh say, so and so please help me. I need uh, a husband, I need a wife, I, uh, I've been married for so long, I don't have children, please help me get children, I need a job, I need money, I need this and I need that. And they call upon the dead. That's associating partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. The most dangerous of association is that which, ha which happens in the heart. When you love something more than Allah, or fear something more than Allah, for example. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ta'isa Abdu Dirham, Ta'isa Abdu Dinar. Miserable is the one who is enslaved to silver, and miserable is the one who is enslaved to gold. How can you be enslaved? How can you be a slave of gold and silver? This is the currency that they used to, to, to deal with. So in other words, one becomes the slave of his money, his wealth. How can you be a slave of wealth? Well, it's when that thing, whatever the thing is, here we're talking about money, for example. When that thing becomes the source of do's and don'ts and not Allah, then you had set him as a partner with Allah who makes you, whom, whom you make your decisions based on it or them. I'll give an example. I was given lectures in a, in a certain country one time and uh, the president of the uh, Muslim community there was a businessman. Uh, so he said, come and sit with me in my shop for a while. So in the morning I had nothing. So I said, okay. So he took me and we went there and sat. And then time came for Salat al Dhuhr. I said, uh, let's go pray. He said, uh, uh, I can't. I said, what do you mean I can't? He said, I can't leave my business. I said, but we got to pray. I said, let's pray inside at least. He said, no, no, no. I'll, I'll pray later. I said, how can you pray later? He said, I'll combine it. At the end, when I go home, I combine my prayers. I said, but you can't. He said, but I lose my business. That's a slave of his business. When Allah tells you do, and something else, the husband, the wife, the business, watching football, watching basketball, baseball, watching a movie. Time to pray. Oh, we can't. The, 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 we'll, we'll lose part of the game. Uh, I'm sitting with my husband. Uh, he doesn't want me to go and, and leave him. I'm sitting with my wife. I don't want to go pray. My wife likes to listen to music, so I'll just do that. My husband enjoys me uh, wearing makeup, so I'll, I'll have to listen to him when we go out and wear makeup. Things like that. He's saying yes, and Allah is saying no. When he or she becomes the source of instructions and not Allah, that's a partner. I hope that makes it clear, or that made it clearer.